<laughs> good morning, True. Good morning. Or should I say good afternoon? Afternoon now, huh? Hi, Raina. Yes. <laughs> Living in Maine and owning livestock in the winter time is uh, coming out every two hours to kick the water bucket to make sure it doesn't freeze over. All right, guys. So we are out in Minnie Mouse's pasture today because I wanted to talk about a situation that happened. Oh, I think it was Thursday, Friday, maybe Friday, whatever day that we got, um, we got a pretty cold snowstorm and blizzard. It was like 10 degrees out and white out conditions blizzarding. It was pretty nasty. And, uh, <clears throat> of course, if your livestock are going to get sick or go down they're gonna do it when the weather is trash and you don't want to be outside um, fixing a downed animal <laughs> so Minnie Mouse um, who is right here eating her lunch uh, went down during the snowstorm um, first thing in the morning I come out every morning and I close the calf in and I water and feed her and the calf. Um, and then we milk at night. Now, when I came out, she was laying down, which is normal. It was, it, there was just, it was snowing. And, um, you know, she was laying down in her hay pile. So I came over with her food, with her breakfast, and she was not interested in it at all. She didn't get up. So immediately I recognize that there's an issue. So I put the calf away and I come over and I kind of try to agitate her enough to want to get up. You know, I kind of pick on her, rub all over her. She doesn't like it when you rub her head. And she's still just not interested in getting up. She's not being real perky. So now I know the cow is down. Something's wrong. Um... <sighs> Your dairy cow going down on your homestead is probably one of the worst things that can happen. Um, if you have a dairy cow on your homestead, you understand exactly what I'm saying. Not only is she raising us a beef calf every single year for our freezer, but we don't buy dairy products anymore. And my family eats a lot of dairy. Um, so we're saving a lot of money. Not to mention our um, son cannot have store-bought milk. It upsets his tummy. So if she wasn't here, we'd have to buy raw milk anyways, and that's expensive. Having her go down was a big deal. Now, I checked her temperature. She didn't have a fever, so that ruled out infection. And then I realized that she hadn't drank any of her water. Um, from the night before after eating her grain and being milked and being put back on the calf So that's not good. So now I know okay, so she's dehydrated and If she's dehydrated to the point where she doesn't want to eat she doesn't want to stand up. She's probably missing a lot of electrolytes um, Which is not ideal either especially in a dairy cow that is producing two and a half gallons a day of milk for the household plus feeding a calf so I ran to the farm store and got a oral solution. I think it's called MPK. It's just a really hardy solution of minerals and electrolytes and dextrose and stuff like that um, to get her back on her feet. That's the first thing you want to do when your cow goes down is you want to get it back on its feet because a cow that is not standing up won't get better. Um, 
or as soon as you get them past the issue, you know, you treat them for whatever is happening, you need to get them to stand up because a cow that lays down too long is having all of its organs sit on one side too long and also making its legs um, numb and sore and then it's going to cause issues and they're not going to want to get up. And that's kind of exactly what happened. So we went to the farm store and of course it took us a while because it was blizzarding out and it was, um, you know, not, not a fun blizzard. It was whiteout conditions. Um, the plow trucks here don't really hit our road first because it's a back road and nobody travels it so they don't need to. Uh, back roads kind of come last. So took us a while to get there and back. We get back, gave her that oral solution. I gave her half the bottle and then um, I went inside for about 20-30 minutes, came back out, and she wanted, she was munching on her hay again, so that's a good sign, and she wanted to drink a bucket of water. Still wouldn't get up though, so I gave her the other half of the solution, went back inside for 20-30 minutes, came out, and as I was approaching her, she tried to get up. Uh, Hey guys, I was just editing this video and realized that I didn't tell you how I gave her the oral solution, which I feel like is kind of important. So, um, we administer oral solutions in our livestock by using uh, the biggest syringe that we can find at our local farm store. I just get the biggest one you can find, put the solution in that syringe. You're going to stick it in the side of the animal's mouth because that will most likely get them to open up their mouth and take it. And then you just kind of push it in. Uh, if you're doing a goat or a small animal, animal, you might have to hold their head up a little bit to make sure they actually swallow it because they're probably going to just spit it back out. Uh, cows are usually pretty good though as long as you get that um, syringe far enough back in their mouth. Um, which is great. I was super excited for a second. That means problem solved. But she couldn't get up. At this point she had been laying down too long and she had been cold because it was really cold outside. Um, and she was not able to get up. She was not able to use her legs properly to stand herself up any longer. Which is why you want to get your cow up as quickly as possible if they are down and ill. So it took me and Paul probably 45 minutes at least, if not an hour, outside in the snowstorm um, getting her up because at this point she was like that giraffe from Madagascar that just like thinks he's gonna die all the time. She was like, just leave me here and <laughs> let me die. And I was like, you're not sick, get up. So we got her up. We had to kind of hold her weight up for her for like five minutes while her legs stopped being so shaky. Uh, which isn't a huge deal because she's not a very big cow. She's a small jersey. Um, but we did get her up. Her milk production was down quite a bit for quite a few days. Uh, yesterday it finally went back up to a gallon and a quarter. But we were getting like two, two and a half gallons a day. Um, today her bag is looking better. But it's also really, really cold out. Our temperatures went back down again. So uh, we'll see what happens tonight. But obviously she's doing just fine. Um, so that's a plus. We were uh, blessed that she came out of that so quickly. Blessed that we have the knowledge um, to recognize these things and treat these things without expensive vet bills or without anything going wrong. So I just wanted to talk to you guys about that so that if it happens to you, you can recognize it and you can treat it. It's fairly, I mean, dehydration is fairly um, simple to treat. You just got to do it quickly. So then I was trying to figure out why she wasn't drinking her water. And then I realized that she hasn't even been touching her mineral block that we have out here for her. Like at all. So she wasn't eating her salts and minerals which means that her body wasn't really like, hey, go take a drink, um, which cows do need a reminder to take a drink, as ridiculous as that sounds. So now we are putting actual like salts out of a bag for cattle on her feed every night so that she's eating it with her, with her beet pulp and her body is saying, hey, go get a drink after she eats and gets milked at night. And that's just one of those things that you'll learn over time. 
I have lots and lots of experience with cattle, pigs, um, a little bit with goats. I'm a fourth generation farmer. So these are things that I know how to treat. We administer like our own penicillin and tylen here. Uh, we don't call the vet for much. And those are also skills that are really important for homesteaders to have because you don't want this lifestyle to cost you a whole bunch of money. If it does, it's kind of pointless. Um, so learning these things and experiencing th these things is good and you'll get better at it. And that was kind of just my point with this short video was to one, tell you guys what is going on because we want to be, um, we want to be vulnerable here in the sense that you guys get to learn with us or learn from us. Now this was something that we had experience in, so you guys get to learn from us this time. Um, but I'm sure there'll be plenty of times that you guys get to learn with us. And homesteaders and farmers do both make mistakes, and that's okay. You can't learn everything all at once, and you, I mean, you can farm and homestead for 20 years and still not have seen everything that can happen with livestock. With that said, I'm gonna leave this video short and sweet. I just wanted to catch you guys up on what was going on with Minnie Mouse. She is doing perfectly fine now. Uh, we are very blessed to have that outcome and it is freezing cold here. I hope it is warmer where you guys are and I will chat with you guys soon. Happy homesteading.